watching our channel if you're new to our channel please click our subscription button below if you like our content again we'll be providing content on a weekly basis so don't miss out now let's go ahead and get into our topic of discussion for today so when students study course material you have of course different courses you have science you have math you have uh, literature you have social studies but you can't study for each course the same way. So what I want to do for you all today is I want to show you how to study for science. I want to show you how you can study for your science courses. Let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing that you need to know when it comes to studying for your science courses is you have to know your Greek roots, you have to know your AKAs, your other words for words, your different names for words. For instance, if your name, whatever your first name is, you also have a middle name and you also have a last name. That's how people will associate you. The same thing goes with some of the processes and some of the different objects that we'll be learning about in our science courses. Another thing that you need to be aware of is your medical terminology. And for those of you who, who don't necessarily have a resource, there are some resources available to you on the internet and also I have this book right here it's called medical terminology a medical terminology book just for you if you're interested in it um, I'll give you a link uh, below in the description where you can have access to this book but this is a really good book for you to start brushing up on some of your medical terminology because it'll allow you to break down words and allow you to, to figure out what the process or concept may mean prior to you even beginning to study the concept. So this will be definitely beneficial for you. Again, I'll post this in the description. So let's go ahead and move forward into our next, uh, our next concept that we want to think about when we're studying for our science courses. So I want you to pay attention to the mechanism. A lot of the scientific processes that go on that you'll be studying they all circle they were they all focus around one particular mechanism for instance i'm talking if i'm talking to my students about the human body i want them to understand that the human body is a mechanism it's like a large factory and like any large factory the human body wants to operate most efficiently now in terms of science terminology, when the body is operating at an efficient state, when it's able to maintain its internal conditions efficiently, this is referred to as homeostasis. So homeostasis is the internal maintenance of your own conditions. This is the, the, the ability for your body to be able to keep its environment in an optimal condition. For my students, I even break down the word homeostasis even further so that they can associate what it means just in case they forget. So homeo and stasis. So I break homeo down into home and stasis into state. You want to stay at home. Home is, is a place that you have peace, that you have balance, that you're able to maintain your internal peace, your internal environment. So that's the way that you can remember homeostasis. So again, just like our factory, just like our mechanism, the body wants to be maintained in its normal condition. It wants to have some internal maintenance of that condition so that it can optimally function. So a good measure for that performance of your body is going to be your temperature. Normal temperature should be around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. However, if the temperature for the body varies too low from that specific measure or too high from that specific measure, you'll start to notice that, that, that there will be 
the indication that something's going wrong inside of the body. Just like in a factory, if it's not operating efficiently, something's going wrong in the chain of command. Something's going wrong in the actual factory. So you want to be thinking of all of your processes from a mechanism perspective. You want to look at it from an overall process oriented perspective. So next, you want to focus on purpose. Purpose is going to be essential to every single thing that you'll be looking at when it comes to studying for your science courses. Let's let's walk through uh, let's walk through an example of that. So I teach my students about the concept of energy production in animals. When you're talking about energy production, you're going to be talking about glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain, or ETC chain. So one could look at each of these processes individually. So let's break them down individually. Glycolysis, right? Again, the citric acid cycle and the ETC chain. While we can look at those individually, you can make them more than what they are. You want to look at them as they relate to each other. You want to connect them to each other because they all relate into the process of energy production. So let's break it down. Glycolysis is the first thing that we'll be looking at. So what is glycolysis? Well, let's revert back to our medical terminology book or even let's think about our personal experiences. Glyco, let's split the word glycolysis into two. Glyco, G-L-Y-C-O, and lysis, L-Y-S-I-S. Glyco looks very similar to a word that we may already know. Very similar to a word called glycogen. What is glycogen? Glycogen is glucose plus glucose plus glucose. It's a polymer of glucose. And glucose is a carbohydrate. It's the, the macromolecule carbohydrate encompasses glucose and glycogen. So glycogen is a carbohydrate. So glyco is a carbohydrate. It's a prefix for a carbohydrate. So our thought process, when we see glyco, we should think glyco, glycogen, carbohydrate. Okay, so glyco equates to carbohydrate. Now let's go over to lysis. Lysis, hmm, ah, I, let's say I don't remember what lysis means. Okay, well, let me take something that I can associate with that I use around my household, Lysol. What does Lysol do? Lysol breaks down bad bacteria, right? It destroys bacteria. So let's use that and run with it. Lys lysis is the breakdown or destruction. And now let's put those two together. So we have glyco and lysis, glycolysis the breakdown of carbohydrates. And that gives us our answer for what glycolysis means. And that's a direct example uh, of how when you, when you can understand prefixes, you can break down words to understand the meaning before you even get into the process. So with glycolysis, as most of you all, you science majors already know, with glycolysis, you're breaking down glucose or carbohydrate, you're breaking it down. Again, glycolysis, the destruction, the breakdown of our carbohydrate glucose. So the main purpose of glycolysis, you already know now, is to break down glucose. And we break glucose down into pyruvate. Now, that's glycolysis. So we move now along to the next part of the energy production, which is going to be our citric acid cycle. And of course, we skipped a small step. But the major, major step that I wanted you to focus on, and I tell my students, it's to focus on the citric acid cycle next. And know that when, it, when this pyruvate molecule goes from glycolysis onto the, onto the citric acid cycle, there's a few different modifications that take place. But overall, just know that that molecule, that glucose molecule that was broken down into pyruvate was modified. And now we're putting it into the citric acid cycle. Let's pause there. This is where you need to know your AKAs. The citric acid cycle has a few different names. It has a first name, a last name, a middle name. The citric acid cycle, AKA the Krebs cycle, AKA the TCA cycle. Again, it's gonna be very critical for you to know your AKAs because if you see 
another name on a test, you need to be able to associate that word with another word that you already know. So let's get back into our citric acid cycle. So we bring our modified pyruvate molecule into our citric acid cycle. And once it comes into the cycle, we use that pyruvate molecule for a specific reason. So once we put it into the cycle, there are more modifications that take place on that molecule. And we want to now think about, well, what else is involved in that citric acid cycle? When you're thinking about processes, you always need to know your big players. Who are the big players in the process? If I go to a basketball game, purpose of the basketball game is for one team to win the game, right? So you don't want to just know that one team won the game. You want to know, well, who were the players that were playing uh, in order to, to help the team to win the game? Was LeBron James playing in the game? Was it Michael Jordan? Who were your big players that were playing in the game to help you win the game? The same principle applies here for the citric acid cycle. Our major players are going to be our coenzymes, our electron carriers, FAD, NAD, and ADP. These are our electron carriers. Now, the way I like to, to teach it to my students is that I want to compare those electron carriers to rechargeable batteries because we'll be giving these coenzymes energy will be giving them energy. So I like to, to think of those coenzymes, ADP, NAD, and FAD, as rechargeable batteries that don't yet have a charge. So as we're going through our citric acid cycle, we utilize that pyruvate molecule that we modified before and that we put into the, the TCA cycle. Now we take energy from that and add it to our electron carriers are rechargeable batteries. And as we add that energy to our rechargeable batteries, now they're gaining a charge, just like your iPhone. If your iPhone, if you use your iPhone up, it's not gonna have any charge. If you put it on the charger, it gains a charge. So that's what we're doing here in the citric acid cycle. We are charging our rechargeable batteries. That's the major purpose of the citric acid cycle. All right, so now let's move on into our next step in the energy production cycle, the ETC chain or the electron transport chain. Now, in the electron transport chain, what you will see is that we'll use, we're, we're going to use that energy that we put on those electron carriers. We're going to use our energy from our rechargeable batteries we're going to use it because if you charge your iPhone up, the reason you charge it up is to use that so you can make calls or text or what have you. So we're going to use our electron carriers, the energy that we have for them, to create a hydrogen gradient. We're going to create a hydrogen gradient. We're going to bring more hydrogens on one side of our mitochondrial membrane. And once we... Once we have a bunch of hydrogens on one side of the membrane, a lot, a lot of hydrogens on one side of the membrane, they are going to want to flow down their concentration gradient. So they always will want to flow from high to low. So in order for our hydrogens to all get to back to the other side of the membrane, they have to go through the turnstiles. So when it comes to your hydrogens flowing back on one side of the membrane, I want you to think of it as a bunch of people outside of a concert. And in order for them to come into the concert, they have to pay a fee. So your hydrogens have to pay a fee in order to get back on the other side of the membrane. Now, this fee is used to bind phosphate and ADP, our other, our, our additional coenzyme or electron carrier. So once our hydrogen comes through, it comes through the membrane, and we utilize that energy to bind our phosphate to our ADP to create an ATP molecule, which is our energy. That's the whole purpose. So we just, we just took three individual processes and we bound them together, we connected them, we related them so that we can look at the focus of it. 
we can look at the focus of the the purpose, the, the focus of the process in itself. Let's actually look at a visual so we can get a better understanding of that. So as you'll see here, again, we started out, we're trying to figure out, we're trying to understand how the energy production a cycle in animals takes place. And again, we're trying to understand it from a purpose perspective, right? So what I want you to do is to think about what you see right here. You see a picture. This is going to go into our next piece of learning science material. You need a picture in front of you. A picture is really going to be critical for you. So let's look. I took this picture right out of a commonly used textbook concepts of biology, and I'll be posting a link for that in the description. So again, this is uh, we're looking at the a, a picture of the energy production process in animals. First, we're starting out with glycolysis. So here's the process of glycolysis. So we look at our picture and we notice a few things. Remember we talked about glycolysis, glyco, we equate that to glycogen, which we equate to carbohydrate. So here's our carbohydrate right here, glucose. And again, we said lysis is the destruction or breakdown. So we're breaking down glucose. And we see right here that we're splitting glucose into two molecules. Let's not worry about what the names of those molecules. We want to understand the purpose. If we understand the purpose, we'll own everything. So we split our glucose molecule up right here. We make a few modifications along the way. And we end up with pyruvate molecules. So again, we go from glucose to pyruvate. We break down glucose into pyruvate. Per main purpose. And then we see here a description uh, of this figure. So we see again, it says here, in glycolysis, a glucose molecule is converted into two pyruvate molecules. So the information underneath your picture in your textbooks explains what's going on in the figure or the illustration. That's glycolysis. Next, let's go on to our next part, the citric acid cycle. So here's our citric acid cycle, and here are some of these modifications that I told you that take place on the pyruvate molecule. Another name, your AKA for pyruvate is going to be pyruvic acid. So again, we look at some of the modifications that take place on this pyruvate molecule, and then we move that modified pyruvate molecule into our citric acid cycle, AKA the TCA cycle, AKA the Krebs cycle. So now we notice, we see again our electron carriers are rechargeable batteries with no charge, NAD, FAD, ADP. You notice they're all being charged. We're adding hydrogens onto these molecules. We're creating energy. And here we add a phosphate onto this ADP molecule to create ATP. So essentially, again, as we talked about, the main purpose of the citric acid cycle is to charge these electron carriers, NAD, FAD, and ADP. We want to bring charge, we want to provide charge for our uncharged rechargeable batteries so that we can use them. All right, and again, here's your description, here's your figure telling us what's going on in the illustration. So now we go to our next part. So following the citric acid cycle, again, we go into the electron transport chain which where in the electron transport chain, we're using our electron, our electron carriers, NAD, FAD, and, and we're utilizing that to create a hydrogen gradient. We're creating a lot of hydrogens on this side of our membrane. And again, just like I told you, so if, 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 if there are a lot of people outside of the concert and they want to get into the concert, they have to pay a fee. So, our, our the, the system of the ETC chain, the steps following it, we utilize that hydrogen gradient. We utilize all those hydrogens that want to come back on the other side of this mitochondrial membrane, right in here. They want to come back on this side. We utilize that to take a charge. We utilize it to take the fee that we charge each person to come into concert to bind ADP, again, our electron carrier, with a phosphate. This PI stands for phosphate. Now we bind those two and we get the ultimate goal, which is ATP. We want to create energy. So there you go. 
Thank you all for watching our video. I really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. If you'd like to follow us on social media, you can check us out at We Beat School. That's on Twitter, YouTube, of course, Facebook, Instagram. Check out our website at beatschoolcollege.com. Have fun beating school.